What's good guys, Just So Farm here. Today for you guys got a review of the Sharp 60 inch 4K Ultra HD HDR compatible TV. Keep in mind guys, this TV's LED and the colors on this TV are outstanding. I held this review off because I thought the only way to review a 4K TV is recording in 4K and that's just way too expensive guys. Right now I'm using the Nikon D5300. I did all the settings and stuff and I have it set so you guys can see how it looks. The colors are amazing guys, it looks beautiful. Right now I'm showing you guys a YouTube video and it's in 4K. And I can show you guys the stats for nerds and stuff through YouTube. I'm about to show you guys that right now. That's on the far right. Stats yep, for stats for nerds as you guys can see. And I'm zooming in right there and as you guys can see, the current optimal resolution, it does show 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames per second. And that's what this is going to. And that is the former 4K, guys. And if you guys are not familiar with that, and showing you guys this review after the update has been completed and everything. If you guys haven't seen my update video, make sure you guys check that out too. And let me show you guys some more things about the TV as well. And you guys can see the video resolution as well. Okay, so. If you go to signal diagnosis in the TV. Menu. Yeah. Go to settings. And then you would go to support, guys. And from support, you want to go all the way down to signal diagnosis. And then from there, you guys can see the video format and what it's in. And as you guys can see what I said right there. It's at 30 hertz right now. Because that's what the video is coming at. And it's right now, it's not on HDR. The, the video is not HDR. Never turn it on. Signal strength and stuff like that. And that's one way you guys can always check what you guys are watching and in the input and stuff like that. So let's go around on some more features of the TV as well. So as you guys are in the setting, as you guys can see this picture, a sound, network, channel, or the system, accessibility, channel, and support. And you guys already saw how support was. So let's start off with picture. You want to talk something about it? Okay, so there's, if you want to adjust the backlight, if it's not bright enough, you can set it, it's to run automatically adjust how bright images appear. As you guys can see, so that's low, middle, and high setting, and you guys can have auto dimming off, or aqua dimming. So it automatically adjusts. Mm -hmm. So you can, it can automatically adjust between the lows, middle, or high. So we put it in the middle, let's say. Mm -hmm. And then you can go back and show them some more stuff. This is the picture modes. Right now the picture mode, it's on vivid, guys. Best suited for the content that requires vivid picture quality. There's standard. Best suited for watching normal content. Example, news, drama, or documentary. Energy saving. I mean, pit, energy saving. Uh, balanced picture viewing experience with low power consumption. Usually that's used in like uh, Best Buy displays or like a TV store where they have a TV on all day. Yeah. And there's theater, best suitable for watching movies in a dark room. There's game, which is best suitable to connect with the TV, with a PC, or a game box with low input lag. So that's if you're gaming at high, uh, whatever you guys playing, Crisis 2, what, you guys already know, if you guys are gaming. Yeah, PlayStation or Xbox. PlayStation, Xbox, or if you connect your PC and you're running some Lord of the Rings. I mean... There's uh, optimized, there's sport, which is optimized picture quality for watching sports. And there's calibrated. Uh, use this mode if you're a professional that tests with instruments, guys. So let's go back and show you guys some more things. Okay, so I'm going to put it back on Vivid. We keep it on Vivid throughout this review. Alright guys, we closed the YouTube stats for nerds. So let me just quickly show you guys everything. I'm not going through the pop-up menu because you guys already know everything. I'm just going through the more advanced menu right now, the settings. So let's go back to picture. So we already covered backlight, we did the picture mode, we keep it in vivid right now. And then now these are your manual settings for vivid. Like this is the preset for vivid right now and you guys can control it by yourself. Let me just fix the focus for you guys real quickly. Yeah, do you have there you guys go. with contrast or brightness, need to make it a little bit brighter. You guys can manually control this. So if you would click OK, you would be able to turn this up and down and stuff like that. So put it back to 52 and then let me click back. And then we would go, there's brightness again, you guys change that. And then you can color, you would adjust the color intensity level. The tint, 
adjust the colors from green to magenta tint to view the natural skin tones of people on the screen. Then there's sharpness, adjust how sharp the, or soft edges of the images appear. Aspect ratio right now is grayed out for me. And then here there's HDMI 2.0 format. This is max the connected device for output format. Select enhance for devices of 4K at 60 hertz. Yeah. For, and those numbers in 10 bit and above and all that. So right now it's at standard because we don't have it connected to a 4K capable HDMI device. Let me go back there, the menu closed. So as I was saying, we don't have it set up to a 4K capable device right now as like an Xbox One S or a 4K play DVD player. Yeah. So that's why it, we don't have it on enhanced. But for you guys that do have that, that's why you guys would want to put it on enhanced. And that answers most of your questions. Why is my format not playing at 60 hertz? And why am I getting not for true 4K? Exactly. So that's the main thing. So make sure you guys don't just put in your thing and just be expected to work because you plugged it in the right uh HDMI port. And make sure the cable is a minimum of HDMI 1.4 or higher. HDMI 2.0 is the latest and that's the greatest to use right now for the battery. Yeah. So let's go back to picture guys. And as we're going back all the way down, there's advanced picture options and there's expert settings and apply picture settings and then there's current source and then reset picture settings. So let's go to advanced picture options where it says adjust advanced picture settings based on your viewing preference. So you click OK on that. You have your color temperature. On the top it shows overscan. That shows like it's permanently on. Digital noise reduction, that's on medium. You'd be able to change that to off, low, and high. The color temperature, you would be able to change between low, mid, low, medium, and high as well. Yeah. So let me just change that. Make to, it like warm colors on definitely. the wall. Or Alright guys, so we were on color temperature, digital noise reduction, and then HDMI dynamic range, it's already stuck on auto. And then there's active contrast, which is on medium right now. Automatically darken dark areas and lighten up light areas of images to see more details. So that's another question you guys have been saying, why does the TV look so, I don't know, like too bright on darks and stuff like that. So you guys can always change your active contrast and stuff like that. Let me go back. And disappears so settings, fast, yeah. So we're at picture again. Yeah. Now let's go back down, guys. To advanced picture options. And then, so that was active contrast. So you click that. We have it on medium right now. You put it to low, dark, or high. I mean, low, medium, or high. And there's off as well. So let's put it back on medium and click back. Click back again. Alright guys, we have expert settings. You can adjust the color space and gamma to best suit the content you're viewing. So let's click it. And so right away it brings color tuner, white balance, RGB only mode off right now. So let's go to color tuner. You can adjust the hue and saturation and brightness of color settings. There's white balance, adjust the intensities of red, green, and blue to generate neutral colors correctly. And then view images based on default settings or choose the more red color red, blue, or green. So if you would click this, you would have off, there would be red, there would be green, blue, you know what I mean? And you would turn that off and you click back. The white balance, you would control by two point, ten point, and then that would activate that. And you have R offset, G offset, stuff like that. B gain, and then there's reset if you messed up or even having too much fun. Yeah, if you have your advanced instruments, then yeah. you can like calibrate each so, setting exactly. of red the green and the blue mm -hmm. and you can add a little bit plus or minus etc exactly et cetera. but it's on all automatic right now on the vivid exactly so and then if you were to go 10 point then you would turn 10 point on and stuff like that and that would give you level 10 red green blue and all that stuff so let me turn that off and let's click back and then for color tuner there's just the same hue saturation brightness and then reset guys so i'm gonna click black again and then there's apply picture settings from what you guys have been doing. And then there's reset in case you guys messed up. So let's click back one more time. And now let's do the sound settings, guys. So in the sound, for sound mode right now, it's at theater. Let's go back right now. This one, for the standard as well, that delivers a flat frequency response, which preserves the natural characteristics of the original sound. And theater, which is what I have it on. 
Currently, it increases the sound, surround sound effect and provides a more prominent subwoofer response. Got a little bit more bass. Definitely. And there's music, emphasizes low and high frequencies to enhance musical instrument reproduction. So that's more if you're listening to actual live music, not necessarily like hip hop music or any stuff like that, but something with more instruments like Beethoven's Ninth Symphony or something like that. The speech attenuates low and high frequency frequencies to improve the reproduction and clarity of human voice. So that's, I guess, if you're listening to like a podcast or something like that. Or increase the voice volume. Increase the voice volume and stuff like that. Uh, we have late night, which improves the, sound, improves the reproduction and clarity of the human voice with a low volume level. So both of these... Uh, Improve the reproduction and the clarity of the human voice, but this one has with a low volume level. And I'm sure the subwoofer cuts subwoofer off. cuts off and stuff like that. And for the night mode. Then we have total sonics over here. This optimizes overall sound quality by increasing bass, widening the sound field, and provides a clear natural dialogue, guys. So right now I have that on. There's total surround. Provides a surround sound experienced by utilizing psychoacoustic acu uh, processing to place sounds aside behind and above the viewer for best results with total sonic so like that's trying to give you like a artificial surround sound yeah but trying to make it seem most natural of a surround sound possible for people that don't have surround sound set sound. up but currently we have it set up yeah let me just play that video for you guys and let's just go back to settings for the sound. <laughs> we'll turn the volume up a little bit. You guys can get some more sound. So that was total volume. And then total volume is maintains a consistent loudness levels from wide dynamic range, programs and loud commercials, and channel input. So this is when you always have a problem with like the TV volume going up all the time. Like it's like why is why is that commercial so loud all of a sudden? You're watching TV and it's just all of a sudden it's so loud. Or you change the channel and it's like so loud. Yeah. So that con keeps a consistent voice volume and dynamic uh, levels from wide dynamic range programs. So then we have it to wall mount setup. Currently we don't have it switched on because we're not using a wall. Well, it's on wall mount, but we're not using the actual two 10 watt speakers that are on the TV. So that's why we have that off. And then there's advanced audio settings. So let's click that. Then we have balance set to the middle of the TV. You would either set that to minus one or plus one. I'm pretty sure you can go all the way to 10 and minus 10. And there's TV speaker. This is what we have it. Disable the TV speaker when you're using a soundbar, arc, or any other external audio amplifier. So automatically the TV turns, the TV volume turns off when our receiver is on. Yeah. So right now we have it connected to a Yamaha receiver, an older one, but it still works great. It's a 5.1, and let me go back to the sound settings. This thing loves closing so fast, guys. It's all good. Short timer. That's why I gotta be fast. <laughs> so let's go back to advanced audio settings. So digital audio out. Select the digital audio input format for the best uh, suits the audio device type. So you can change that to DD, RAW, PCM, and off. So yeah, DD is Dolby Digital. Dolby Digital. RAW if you want your receiver to handle all the stuff. Like and the other PCM. So let's go to digital audio delay. Adjust the digital audio output from delay time to sync sound from an external uh, speaker with the images on the TV. So if you have a problem, you're watching a movie and the guy's dialogue's out of sync. Mm -hmm. You can adjust that to fix it. Yeah, and then synchronize the displayed image with the audio output. So there's lip sync, se lip sync settings as well, which is pretty cool to be having the TV. And there's an equalizer. Boost the volume at different frequencies. So if you were to click that, you would have 100 hertz, 500 hertz, 1.5k hertz, 5k hertz, and 10k hertz, which you guys can always mess around to your perfect sound settings if you're using the TV volume. So. And then this preferred audio language is a set up English because that's when you set up, start up your TV, you would have your settings. Yeah. And then also there's, at the bottom there's audio out, audio out variable. Change the way the audio is sent through the type of device 
that's connected to your TV audio out port. And there's nothing else there, I'll click back. And there's resalt default audio settings in case you guys messed up again. Now you guys can go to network. I'm not gonna really show you guys that because I will show you all my IP addresses and stuff like that. So there's network information, there's wake on wireless network, wake on LAN, there's a connection test if you're trying to do a test, start a network connection test, and there's configuration. That's how you would be setting up your IP and all that. Wired or wireless, right? Exactly, and that's how you would gain all your access to your smart TV futures that it says right there. And you, can, you guys can go to system now. It has parental controls if you're, this TV's in your child's room or if you're trying to lock certain channels, I guess, or yeah. whatever you guys are trying to do. And so you can set your language, your keyboard layout, your location. We in Canada, you guys already know, up north. We're sitting in snow, <laughs> nothing better to do. For real. Driving to Tim Horton every 10 minutes. Yep. Uh, we got the time and date right here. Set the current time based on your location. You have timer settings, adjust the timer settings to suit your preference. Let's adjust the timer setting right now. So we'll set the timer setting. So the sleep timer. And that menu timeout right there at the bottom. There's power on timer. And there's power off timer. And then, so let's change the menu timeout to off. Because, so I can make this review for you guys. Exactly. Should've done that in the first place, guys. Now you feel silly. <laughs> so, here we got the CEZ function. You click that, and this shows you would turn that on. And when you turn that on, that says, allow the CEZ enabled devices that are connected to an HDMI port to control the TV. So, over here, you would have audio receiver. I guess we should have this checked, I believe. I'm not too sure about all this. Uh, device auto power off, it says allow CC enabled devices to turn off with the TV. TV power on, allow the TV to turn on with CC enabled devices. So I guess what it is, is when you turn your PlayStation on or anything that has the arc, it would automatically turn, turn your TV, your TV on. on. So allow the audio receiver to send audio over an HDMI cable back to your TV. And then CC device this, you would connect your device guys. Let me turn CEC control off right now. I'll mess with that after. You have TV name, smart TV. You can always change that. Choose a name for your TV. The best name will be shown on device that are eligible for sharing data. Application settings. So these are where your stuff are and stuff like that. Advanced settings. There's your power LED. Audio only, turn off the screen. Display to save energy. Press any button except power to turn on the picture back to turn the picture back on. There's input labels, default live TV input, screen saver, notifications, and send diagnostics and usage. So for send diagnostics and usage, it would send TV running errors and usage statistics to the server to improve service quality. No personal information is collected. For notifications, it will be allow pop-up notifications to appear for useful information and events that occur with your TV. A screensaver, select to show an active screensaver when the TV is idle. Default live TV inputs on HDMI right now. Set up a source as a default source, which is launched with the TV button. And then edit the input labels. Let me click back. And the setup wizard to instruction to help set up your TV. And so that's all the system. Let's go to accessibility. There's a lot of settings on this TV, guys. Oh, yeah. There's caption control when mute. I'm just trying to speed this review up for you guys, so I'm not going to be reading, going into everything that's most right now, because I already went into the picture and the sound and more of the menu, because that's more of the most important things to yeah. really go into. Any questions, let us know. We can help. Definitely. Out. Make sure you guys comment and subscribe, because I'm tired of standing right now. <laughs> There's menu audio right here. You can choose to leave the audio menu, prompts on or off, so you can turn that on, and that would give menu audio settings turned highlighted. You have video description. Choose to leave the video description feature on or off. High contrast menu. Choose to leave the high contrast menu on or off again. And then close caption settings. And that's all that. Let me go into there. And then over here would be your closed caption settings as you guys can see. Digital captions, digital CC, and then size, large, and then fonts and stuff. And then now let's go to channel guys. Here's channel skip, manual scan, tuner. This is if you would have, I guess, your cable or your satellite set up to your TV. Yeah. You guys can control it through this. Currently we don't. Currently we don't. And that's if you're not using the remote already that came with your cable. Yep. And then you guys can go to support. In support, 
There's a belt, the TV, view system information. I'm not going to show you guys that because it has all my IP information and all that. Um, this end user license agreement, click to read the disclaimer details. And then you can check the software update. And make sure you guys haven't, if you guys haven't seen my other video for my software update for January 3rd, 2018, make sure you guys check that out. That's when I update this TV for the newest software to get the most 4K out of the TV for the day. And then the signal diagnosis to help determine input video signal issues. And that you guys already seen right here at the beginning of the video. So yeah guys, that's pretty much all the settings and stuff there. Most of it's the same on the menu pop-up options. And as well, you we guys, went through the main and the main We menu. went through the main and as you guys can see the quality on the TV is gorgeous. There's more buttons on the TV as well. The remote contains Netflix, Opera TV, uh, Kodi TV and a YouTube button. And yeah guys, don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe to the channel. And I hope you guys like the video that I made. And don't forget to comment for any concerns or any problems you guys are having with the TV. And what you guys think I can do better for the next review. Definitely will help you, everybody yell. Thank you for watching, guys. Take care.